Howdy folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. Today we continue our Damascus series and now we get into the mosaics. So today we're going to be starting with a pretty simple mosaic, probably one of the simpler ones you can do, but I still think it comes out beautiful. So we're going to do basket weave Damascus today. So let's go down to the table and take a look. So let's talk about basket weave. Um, this is probably the simplest, like I said, the simplest mosaic. We're really going to start with our stack, something like this. Okay, we're going to forge this down into a square bar. Okay, and in forging it, you, you, you're going to distort these layers a little bit. They might kind of bow out a, a little bit, something like this. So, but that's good. Okay, they're not going to be perfectly straight. Then we're going to take this bar and we're going to cut it into four. Then we're going to take each one and rotate it 90 degrees. So we'll take a bar and this time we're just going to, it'll be this way. You can see where this is going. This one, like this, like that. Okay, so there's now our new combined bar. We're going to forge that together and again down into a small square. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing, four way it again. And I'm not going to draw them all, but you'll get the you get the point of you're going to just see a bunch of checkerboard kind of patterns here. This will give us our final pattern. Okay. Then we're going to forge this, and I'll talk a bit a bit more uh, when we do it. But the pattern for most mosaics is on the end of the billet. Okay. We need to get that on the surface, and that's where we're going to talk about tiling and uh, some other techniques and I'll talk more about those when we get there. So we start by forge welding this together. This is actually a pretty basic forge weld. There's nothing really complicated about forging this piece. Although I've got a 1 and 3 8 inch kiss block here, I'm not actually forging it to that thickness. It just gives me a good reference point to know that um, I've got it to the same thickness all the way down. Now I've moved to the 1 inch kiss block and that's going to get me a constant thickness all the way down. One of the most important things here is to keep the billet square. You don't want to get it kind of rhombus or at an angle because that's going to make it much harder to fit those four pieces together in the four way. We've almost got this to the thickness we need, uh, a couple more heats just to get it nice and even, and then we'll take it to the long flat dies just to make sure it's nice and level and flat. So we got the billet all forged out. It's a one inch by one inch square uh, by about 16 inches long. So we're going to cut the ends off. Before we do anything, we're going to number it. One, two, three, four, so we know which ones are in which orientation. And the reason I do this before you cut it 
is because when you put it in the bandsaw, the horizontal bandsaw, which is automatic, uh, sometimes it cuts, falls on the floor, rolls, and you have no idea which orientation it was in. So I like to do, and I love this little marking pen, one, two, three, four. So you'll know which orientation you, uh, you had them in. So now let's go first cut off the ends, cut in half, cut in half again. Okay, so I've cut them up into four. I've ground the and etched the edges, um, and I've taken each one and turned it 90 degrees, put them all back together. So now we're going to grind the sides, the insides, and uh, forge weld them back together. After you got these aligned correctly, don't forget to number them. Onto the angle grinder just to remove the forge scale to save some belts. Here's a good trick to make sure your bars are square. First, square your rest to your platen, grind one side, and then take that side and make sure you put it down on the rest and grind the other one. And then you should have perfectly square edges. So I wanted to take a bit and talk about distortion. So hot steel deforms faster than steel that's a little cooler. So as soon as it comes out of the forge and goes into the press, when it's yellow or almost white hot, it's going to deform easily. So if you want square corners on the edges of the billet, you'll usually do it at a cooler heat. Otherwise, it'll actually deform the billet a lot more. We're almost done forging this part together. We'll square it up nice and even, and again, go to the long flat dies, flatten it out. So now we've just repeated that whole process that we did, cut it up into four, restack it, re-weld it, back in the forge. When I'm doing a four-way, I do like to use the squaring dies just to set the first forge weld, because that applies pressure in two different angles, actually four different angles, at the same time. Then I'll move on to the flat dies. So by the end of this forging session, we want the billet set up so it's in the proper orientation for tiling. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Hey folks, want to take a pause here and talk about our sponsor, Maritime Knife Supply. If you're a knife maker, they have everything you need, from steel all the way to hydraulic presses and everything in between. They're up in Canada, but you can shop in U.S. prices and pay in U.S. dollars, and they'll ship it anywhere in the U.S. or elsewhere. So go take a look at Maritime Knife Supply. The link's down in the description. All right, so here we are after forge welding the second four-way together. Um, you'll notice that the billet is not square anymore. Um, it's wider on one side than it is on the other. That's because we got to tile it. And the reason we don't want this exactly the same dimensions on either side is if you look at the length between, you know, a 40 degree slice, it's a lot wider than, than this. Okay, because the slice is going to be here, which is probably almost going to match this width. So that will return our uh, proportions. Also, we actually want it a little narrower because, again, we're going to draw this billet out mostly this way. So if we, if we kept this square, we would distort it 
and then instead of a basket weave it would be stretched in one direction more than the other which just looks odd so that's why we're kind of preforming this to account for distortion that's going to happen okay so we're going to take it to the bandsaw we're going to slice it up this way and then I'll, I'll come back and show you guys okay so we've cut the end off um, easiest way to do this, first of all, if you don't have a horizontal bandsaw, get one. Um, I wouldn't try to cut this with uh, an angle grinder. You'll never get it right. You're just going to spend your time grinding these faces flat. So what I like to do is just set these up. I just moved it. Um, and set the slices usually to around 5 8 Okay, it's about like that. And then the easy thing is is just to set your stop here there so now I can just set this up lock it down and just keep cutting slices off right before I set the saw down I like to number each slice so I know which one came off where because you want to keep them in order So there's a little test etch. This is the end piece, so uh, the layers aren't quite as straight here just because it's an end. I'm sure in the middle it's going to be a little better. So we've got our billet all sliced up here. Now we're simply just going to restack it like this, keeping the numbers all aligned here. We got eight full slices excluding the end pieces so that's really good so there we go now what we're going to do is use our um, I have a tilting rest so we're going to tilt the rest exactly at this angle and really we want to clean up all of these connecting areas here and you can see with the overlap the reason we do it on an angle is that now when we press straight down we're actually applying pressure here um, so that will join and fuse and uh, forge weld these together so that's next um, so we're going to clean these up and then we'll talk about sacrificial steel to keep these all together I also wanted to take a minute and talk about the white lines um, between the bars here these lines this is from decarb uh, so decarburization as these individual billets and then you'll see it even more pronounced here from doing these four um, this will go away the way the reason this uh, the the um, the way this goes away is to soak the billet at a pretty high temperature and then we'll get the carbon to move across um, this boundary so as we tile it, you'll see that this one will probably go away. Probably all of these will mostly go away. We will see these lines. Okay. And then the way to do it is after we've got it um, forge welded together uh, and then we have a billet, we'll normalize it. Then we'll grind it again and check. And if we don't have those lines out, we'll soak it at high temperature again before we do anything with it. Usually I find by the time you normalize it, you do some thermocycles, all those are pretty much gone anyway. So we got the edges all ground. Uh, the great part about using the rest for this with a constant angle is you get a perfect seam like I can't even get a razor blade between those so that's what you want next we're gonna weld these up so I've got some sheet metal this is like 40,000 50,000 sheet metal um, what I do first is tack either end just so they don't move around then tack each one on either side and then run a bead down run a bead down flip it over do the other the same thing with the other end and then I'll go back and weld all these seams. Okay, um, you can TIG weld this. It's just I don't like to put weld, or even if it's TIG, it's just a lot of weld, and I certainly don't want to grind the sides to, in order to do TIG. So MIG is easy here. You're going to end up grinding all this stuff off anyway. All right, let's get to it.
The nice part about using really thin sheet metal is I don't have as much to grind off later. Here we go for our final forge welding session. We want to reduce this by at least about a half. So let's see where we're at now. Um, I've ground off the edges and, uh, and the mild steel. Let's take a closer look here. So here you can see our pattern, which looks really cool. Um, still a bit of mild steel on the edges here, but that's fine. Um, you can see we're at mm, almost 3 8 so we still got to go back in. Um, and also important to note is you'll see that the width of these here, um, the width is not the same, sorry, this distance is not the same as this distance. So we're going to draw this out this way with the rolling mill. Um, and then we'll stretch those and it'll, uh, it'll look a lot more, you know, geometric, a lot more square, which is exactly what we want. The reason you want to check this, because if these were perfectly square, then I would just use the flat dies so I expanded this in all directions. Um, but because I've got, you know, a, a little the rectangular instead of square, I'm going to draw it out with the rolling mill. All right, let's get it back in the forge. Um, and you also notice the lines. You can still see these lines, but the lines between... Um, the uh, squares where we did the last four away, those are already gone. So these lines will probably be gone in, uh, in this heat. I start here with the flat dies. Again, just reducing this. I'm being very conscious of my distortion. Uh, that's why I'm using the flat dies here. Our final step will be using the rolling mill and that'll draw it out lengthwise. And again, if you don't have a rolling mill, that's fine. You'll just be using drawing dies. They just introduce a little more distortion than I like. The rolling mill keeps it nice and even. Well, folks, here is the final billet. It came out at 14 inches. Um, it's 3 16 thick. Uh, and I, I just love the pattern here. I'll see if I can get a closer look here for you guys to check it out. You can see there's just a little bit of distortion in each square. I think it kind of adds to the, uh, the pattern a little bit. So, very cool. Uh, there's a couple of those lines, like here, but uh, again, those will come out after the, uh, the normalization. So there's our first example of a mosaic, uh, a pretty simple mosaic uh, to do. I say simple, but it was still, if we think about it, it was four forging sessions. The initial stack um, to, a, to a cube or to a square, four-way, another four-way tile, and actually there was five because we had to draw this out uh, in a fifth forging session. So you can tell uh, that's why these things are so expensive when you get into uh, mosaics. But um, fun to do. I think you can get some cool patterns. Thanks for joining me, folks. See you on the next one where Echo Blades, uh, Jared, my buddy Jared from Echo Blades, is going to be joining me in the shop. And we're going to be making some Explosion Damascus. We'll see you next time, guys.